Many of Odin's attributes allow you to pass in string parameters that can reference members or contain the C-sharp expressions to be evaluated. These attribute expressions allow even more customization as you easily inject basic logic into your inspector. We often get questions about how to do something with Odin, and frequently attribute expressions are a good answer to that question. So we thought we'd make a video explaining what they are and give a few examples of how to use them. Attribute expressions are denoted by a string that starts with an at symbol. These allow us to write C-sharp code inside of a string that will be resolved by Odin and executed. As a simple example, an info box attribute takes in a message to display, and we can use an attribute expression to change the value of the message displayed. We could start with a simple class with two integers, a and b. Maybe we want to display some information about a and b in that info box. One way to do that would be to create a string variable that contains the information and use an attribute expression to display that information. This isn't terribly useful, but it's a start. So let's take it one step further. Maybe we now want to compare the values of a and b. So we can write a function that outputs a string that tells us how a compares to b. Then we change the attribute expression to call this new function. Now if we change the relative values of a or b in the inspector, the message in our info box changes accordingly. But we can take it even further and get rid of our function and put all the logic into the attribute expression itself. We can copy the logic from our function into the attribute, but we need to make a few adjustments as we now have errors. Adding backslashes for escaped quotes will resolve the issue. With this, we now have the same functionality, but it's all in line and wrapped into an attribute expression rather than an additional function. It's worth noting that up to this point, we are not using verbatim strings. The at is inside the quotes, making it an attribute expression. However, if we want to rewrite the expression using a verbatim string, we can do this. We just need an additional at symbol outside of our string to tell the compiler that we have a verbatim string. We then replace our backslashes with extra sets of quotes. The functionality is identical, so write your attribute expressions in whichever way works best for you and your use case. So far, we've seen that we can write C-sharp expressions inside of our attributes. As another example, we could use this to access the fields of a class from a second class, something like this. But we could also achieve this with the use of what Odin calls named values. Most resolvers have the named values property, value, and root. In this case, we could make use of the value. The value references the value of the property that the string is resolved on if there is such a value. In this case, the named value replaces this dot sum field. And for those of you who are familiar with the Odin property system, for example, if you've been creating custom drawers or processors, we could get the same results by making use of the property value. The property value references the property instance that the string is being resolved on. While using the name values might not seem all that useful at first, Watch what happens if we move this label text attribute from the field definition to the class definition and then add a few more fields. Now the name of each field automatically becomes the value of whatever is inside the string. But there's more because you can also do it the other way around. We can create a float toggle class that starts out something like this. If we then create a parent class with several instances of float toggle, we get something like this and an inspector that works, but we can make it a lot better. To improve the inspector, we can first hide the regular labels with hide label, then put the bool and the float in a horizontal group, and then rename the label of the float value field to be the name of the parent property using the property value. The result is better organization, and by using the named value, each instance of the float toggle has a name corresponding to the instance name in the parent class, resulting in a very easy to read and easy to use inspector. Additionally, we can make use of the root named value, which returns the instance of the inspector root. For example, we might have a player class and an enemy class, each of which has an instance of a stats class. To customize our inspector, we could label the stats field by using the type of the root object. Since the root named value returns the instance of the root object, we could also access fields and functions on the root object. But since the type of the root object can change, we need to be careful and deal with the situation if it occurs. For example, we could use a list on the root class to provide dropdown values for a function. But since the type of the root object can change, we need to be careful as the fields and functions may not exist on the root object. If you want to go further with named values, we'd recommend you take a look at Schwapo's Resolved Parameter Overview. It's an editor window that lists attributes and corresponding named values, along with examples of how they might be used. 
We'll add a link to the GitHub page in the description below. Additionally, it's possible to create custom named values, and we'll add a link to the video and written documentation on how to do that in the description below. The property named value gives us access to the inspector property of a given field, but sometimes you might want to access the inspector properties of another field. This could be useful to control whether a field is enabled or visible, and we can do this with query syntax. This is done by writing the name of the field we want access to inside parentheses with a pound sign in front. For example, we could decorate a bool field with an onState update attribute, then give the attribute a string that accesses the state of a property in another field. Once we have the state of the property, we have access to the visibility of the property, and we can set the visibility to the value of the bool field. The result is that from a parent class, we can now toggle on and off the visibility of a field in a child class. This example and the others that we've shown are just some of the more basic uses and can be further customized for your own project's needs. So I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. If you have questions, come find us on Discord or leave a comment down below.